Hi everyone, this video is going to go ahead and discuss a little bit more the uh, topic of conditional probability. So our definition that we had discussed in class is the probability that event B happens given that event A happens before it is equal to the probability of A and B occurring divided by the probability of A. Okay, if you were to go back in through your notes or double check the slides from the course or read through your textbook, you would see this definition. And right now, since we're just kind of using symbols and kind of existing in the realm of theory, this may not carry a whole lot of weight right now. But in certain situations, we may be curious about, well, what is the probability of A and B happening? Okay. Um, the layer of challenge here is that, well, in this situation, sometimes the probability of A and the probability of B happening, um, there's going to be some dependence between the two events. So one cannot happen without the other. And in that situation, we have to be a little bit careful, and that's where um, the definition for conditional probability comes in. So we can actually take the definition for conditional probability and rewrite it using algebra. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go ahead and isolate the probability of A and B to one side of this equation. And in order to do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by the probability of A. So the reason why I'm going to go ahead and do that is because the probability of A that you see in the denominator will cancel with the probability of A in the numerator. This is going to result in the following definition then the probability of event A and event B happening is going to be equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A. So what I basically did was I just cleaned everything up and uh, rewrote it. Okay. So this may not mean a terrible lot of uh, a terrible lot of uh, anything to you at this point. So we're going to go ahead and try to apply it to um, an example. So bear with me while I go ahead and construct the table with the information. So what we're going to go ahead and do is um, we're going to utilize this example that deals with the ELISA test. And just to give you a little bit of background, the ELISA test um, is basically used to help determine if someone has HIV or uh, is HIV free. Okay, so in that situation, we have two potential outcomes with the ELISA test. We could get a positive result, or we could get a negative result. All right, and of course, the only people who would potentially be taking this um, test would be those with HIV and those without HIV. So with the sample data that we're going to go ahead and take a look at, um, I will provide you with a total row and column as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And if you feel so inclined, feel free to construct this example in your notes as well. Um, so the Say we did a sample and we, we, we created our sample space and we came up with the following values. Um, so people who were positive, who have HIV and tested positive, we found that there were 498 people. Um, those who were without HIV but tested positive, so in other words, they had a false positive, or sorry, um, yes, a false positive result, we found that that actually happened 1,990 1, people in our sample had a false positive. So basically they came in and they do not have the HIV virus, but the test told them that they did. Um, so it made a mistake. So those people with HIV who tested negative, so in other words, those individuals who got a false negative because they actually do have the virus, there were two people that basically slipped under the radar. For those people that we talked to who were without HIV and had an accurate response of the test telling them that they were negative for HIV, we have a total of 97,510 people. So if we total this out, 
we would get the following values and feel free to pause the video and check my numbers. So in our particular example, I'm just going to scoot this up so I have a little bit more writing room, and I will leave our definition that I have boxed in purple up there so that you can view that. Um, say, for example, I wanted to know what the probability of maybe someone who, the probability of selecting someone who tests positive and is without HIV. Okay, so bear in mind that this is different than asking what's the probability of someone who is positive given that they do not have HIV. What we are looking at right now is not a conditional probability in the situation. Okay, so if we were to apply the definition um, above, so I will go ahead and arrow that up, we can go ahead and recreate this. We can say, okay, the probability of someone being positive and with HIV is going to be the probability of <clears throat> um, someone who is, say, positive given they're without HIV times the probability that someone does or so, that someone is without HIV. So I'm mimicking what I'm showing in that boxed formula. So if we were to go ahead and do this and actually work it out, well, the probability of someone who is positive given, or someone who tests positive given that they uh, are without HIV is going to be this um, 1,990 out of the 99,500. Remember, this is the conditional probability, so we are referencing those without HIV, and we are only going to ask within those people who are without HIV how many of them tested positive. Okay, Then we are going to go ahead and do a multiplication, and we just want to find out the probability that someone is without HIV. So in other words, our pool is going to expand. We're going to go into our entire sample space and just pull out the people who are without HIV. So that would be the 9,000, or sorry, 99,500 people out of uh, 100,000. So if we were to take care of this multiplication, um, in this case, it actually works out pretty nicely because we have the same values happening in the uh, numerator and denominator there. So 1,990 out of 100,000. And if we were to, say, go to a calculator, unless you're really good at doing division in your head, uh, we get that this percentage is going to be 0 0.0199, or in other words, 1.99%. So the probability, we're saying in this case, is um, the probability of finding someone or selecting someone who is positive, who tested positive, and is actually without HIV is going to be about um, almost 2%. Okay. So, and that should technically make sense. I mean, the way that we have it here, I provided you the table so that you can actually verify that. If we were to just use the table in general, we could say, okay, I'm going to do this in blue, probability of someone being positive and someone testing positive, and let me be clear, I'm sorry, and is without HIV, well, again, that's actually going to refer to these individuals here. These are the individuals without HIV and who tested positive, so that's going to be your 1,990 people out of your entire pool here, so your 100,000. So it does take us back to the same work, okay? Now, let me be clear here as well. Um, if we were to go back and say reconstruct the same problem that we did in light green, so the probability of positive and without HIV. So you might be asking, well, I do see the definition up here, the probability of A and B. 
right? But you might also remember, but I do remember in my notes, or maybe from the slides, that it could also be written as the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Will that one work as well? Because let's be honest, both of them, we are both, in both of those situations, we are finding the probability of A and B. So again, if we were to go ahead and do this one, um, I will do it in a, mm, let's see, a green. I'll just continue it in green. So if we were to mimic this one, we could say the probability of being without HIV given that they test positive times the probability that they test positive. Will this give me the same answer of 1.99%? Well, let's see. So the probability of being without HIV given that you test positive. Well, those who test positive, our pool then is going to be 2,488 individuals. And within that pool of 2,488 individuals, um, 1,990 people are without HIV. Okay, so we'll circle that. So I'm just trying to keep all my colors together. And then we want to know the probability of someone testing positive. Well, we know that we would be referring to our pool of 100,000 people in our sample space, because again, we're going very broad. We just want to know out of the people who we surveyed, in other words, all 100,000 people, how many of them tested positive? Well, the total number of people who tested positive was 2,488. And as you can see, something very similar will happen. We actually get right back to that same probability. So see how it's all connected? So to answer your question, it really doesn't matter which of these definitions you use. They will take you to the same solution because they are actually they are taking you to the same solution. This is not a fluke. Okay. Um, I believe that that is as far as I need to go. So as you can see here, um, there is going to be some sort of dependence as indicated in the table. Um, we do see an overlap. There are a certain set of people who not only test positive, but also are without HIV, okay? So this is actually how um, we can use conditional probability to help us find the probability of two events actually occurring at the same time, okay? So if you do have any other questions, please feel free to come and ask me, and I hope that this video is helpful. Any feedback that you can provide me would be greatly appreciated in order for me to improve on this video or um, in future ones. So I hope this helped.